Oshkosh FAA NOTAM. Notice the airman. Notice the airman, download NOTAM. We'll just download it, take a look at it, print it out. 32 pages? Are you insane? Hey folks, Bill with Hangar Rats. Today we're going to go over the NOTAM for AirVenture 21, Oshkosh 2021 uh, that just came out and hopefully go through it with you folks. If you've never been to Oshkosh, it's, uh, let's just say it's really busy, you got to pay attention, but it's nothing you should be afraid of or scared of. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this. Uh, there's a total of 32 pages when you print it out. They say it's only 30 pages, but there's a front and rear cover which has some information on it. We're going to talk about all that, and we're going to go through the whole no temp page by page. And don't worry, it's not going to be too bad. And the assumption is that we're going to be flying VFR during the day in just a regular old airplane, okay? Just a Piper, Cessna, Cirrus, RV, whatever. But that's going to be our assumption. We're not a helicopter. We're not a warbird. We're not IFR. So for most of you folks that are going to be coming to Oshkosh, it's going to be during the day, um, VFR, get in line and fly in. Okay, so that's what we're going through. Not a, uh, not a big thing. So we're going to go through this page by page. Let's follow along. Okay, so we're going to do this fast. We're going to go through all 32 pages real fast and get it sorted out. Uh, again, we're going through the NOTAM. You can either print this out, PDF, or you can get it mailed to you. If you get it mailed to you, it'll be a nice, uh, the last time I did it, um, it's a nice double-sided type of thing. Um, all nice, kind of slick paper, uh, really pretty and all that. I personally would recommend against that because I don't like to have to flip things over in the cockpit. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So, page one. Page one is, I've always flown Oshkosh, so I don't need to really look at anything else. This year, it's different. There's some, they've added some transitions uh, in addition to Fisk. So, uh, or prior to Fisk. So most importantly is uh, that is a big change. If you flew two years ago and you think there's no changes, that's going to be a problem for you. So you need to really understand that. They do have the um, identifiers for those transitions, so you need to be aware of that. Um, there's some editorial changes and things of that nature. Uh, there's some runway width changes, really not going to affect you. Um, but the most important thing is there, there are a couple VORs decommissioned in the area. Now, that's in this area. Now, I don't know about your area, but our area has also had VORs decommissioned. So on part of your planning, think about that, okay? That uh, on your route, there may not, if you're doing VOR navigation, you may not have those VORs out there. So check on NOTAMs all the way from what your origin point to Fisk, essentially. So that's, that's page one. Okay, page two. Uh, so page one, we can actually kind of get rid of. We don't really care care about. Page two, or which is actually page one. Uh, page one is pre-flight planning. It's going to talk about all different things. Uh, we'll come back to that. Um, that's something we want to keep. So page one, we want to keep. Um, page two, VFR route planning guide, page two. Uh, that, again, we're going to keep uh, a lot of good information there. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So that's page two. Page three, VFR route planning guide. Important information, so we're going to keep that also. So that's important to keep. Okay, now this is what I call, we go from our prior planning or pre-planning to our en route phase. So this is from wherever you are in the world to Fisk. So on this one here, this is the Fisk arrival to Oshkosh. This is something that we're going to definitely want to keep. We'll go, again, we'll talk about it later. We'll keep that one. Fisk arrival to Oshkosh, page five. More uh, information, it's the transitions and all of that information. So that's uh, something we want to keep. Fisk arrival to Oshkosh. There's some uh, visual pictures and things of that nature that we'll want to keep. Okay, so that's page six we'll want to keep. Keep on coming. Page seven, more Fisk arrival to um, uh, Oshkosh. And they're going to talk about landing approach. They're going to talk about formations, flights of aircraft, other things of that nature. Uh, hang on to it. So we're going to want to keep page seven for sure. Page eight, this is going to be just in case um, something happens. Uh, I call it plan B, um, but this will be alternate stuff. So it's Fisk holding. There, there is a possibility that you may have to hold in the area. I've done it uh, 
once or twice. I think twice I've had to do holds in the area. So definitely want to keep this in your package. We'll talk about that later. Fisk arrival, runway nine, page nine. We'll want to keep that very important if we're landing on runway nine. Page 10, Fisk arrival to runway 27. If the wind's going the other way, we're going to need that. So that's, that's a keeper, page 10. Page 11. Page 11 is Fisk VFR arrival to runway 18 right. Okay, so that's something that we're going to want to keep. That's the big runway north-south, heading south. <clears throat> uh, page 12 is Fisk VFR arrival to runway 36 left and right. Again, we're going to want to keep that. We don't know where we're going to be landing. This is we're putting our nav package together, our, our data package to go in the plane. So this is, we're getting it organized. Um, Fond du Lac diversion procedure, page 13. Uh, this is kind of a plan B thing, just in case we have to divert, we're going to keep this. So page 13 we keep. Page 14, Oshkosh Airport notes. Yep, we're going to keep that. That's important. VFR departure and IFR departure. We're not departing, we're arriving. So because of that, we don't need it. So we're going to take it, we're going to kick that one out. So page 15, we're not going to, we're going to keep it. We're going to, might, might keep it in the back of the plane, but we don't really need to have this, uh, this handy to us. So page 15, we can delete from our package. Page 16, VFR departure from Oshkosh. Again, we're working on arriving in Oshkosh, so we're going to leave that uh, something to read later. Turbine Warbird arrival, page 17. We're not a turbine, we're not a Warbird, okay? We're just a GA airplane, so boom. We don't care about page 17. Page 18, Air Venture seaplane base. We're not, again, I'm just talking land plane, fixed wing with a radio, normal plane. We're not a seaplane, so... We're not going to worry about that one. So page 18, don't worry about that one. Page 19, uh, helicopter procedures, arrivals and departures. We're not a helicopter. If you are, well, maybe you do, but for us, page 19, we don't care about. No big deal. Page 20, page 20 is ultralight procedures. So we're not an ultralight. We're not going to be there. You might want to review it um, at your leisure. You don't really need to, but uh, there will be some aircraft buzzing around. You're going to be flying around them. But uh, we don't need it for what we're doing. So page 20, we're not going not gonna to keep that one. We don't care about that. Well, no, 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 no. Put that in that pile. Uh, Fond du Lac arrival departure. Um, we might need that if we get uh, kicked out of uh, Oshkosh. If it gets too busy, we may not have to be, we may not be able to get to Oshkosh. So we're going to keep this as kind of be kind of part of our plan B, um, kind of our plan B uh, package. Um, Fond du Lac arrival departure, same thing, page 22, we're going to keep that, that's going to be part of our possible diversion uh, package, so we're going to keep that. Appleton arrival departure, same thing, page 23, we're going to keep that one, okay. Appleton arrival departure continued, page 24, 24, we're going to keep that. <clears throat> dum, dum, dum. Page 25, IFR reservation program. We don't care about that. We're VFR. We don't care about that, so we're going to get rid of that. Again, that goes in, the, goes in the back of the plane. IFR arrival route planning. Page 26, we don't care about that. We're VFR. IFR departure route planning. We're VFR. We're not that. Page 27, we don't need. Page 28, airborne IFR clearance pickup after VFR departure. If we're VFR arriving, well, that's all we care about. We can read this stuff later, but right now, this is Airborne IFR, page 28. We don't need for what we're doing. Canadian pilots and Oshkosh Nordo arrival, page 29. Uh, Canadian pilots, again, that's something you guys are going to have to know. Uh, I'm assuming for the purpose of this, you're already in the U.S. You've got your procedure, you've got your uh, proper uh, prior authorizations and all that. So as far as we're concerned for this exercise, we don't need this uh, Oshkosh Nordo procedure. That's insane, but um, if you want to fly into Oshkosh, you can do it without a radio, but for the purposes of our exercise, we don't need page 29, so that's that. Flight service information, page 30. Page 30 is a good one to keep. We're going to hang on to that. That's, uh, that'll be kind of miscellaneous information. We'll keep that. And then, let's see what our last one is. Our last one is the back cover. Not really an official page, but it's got a ton of frequencies on it, so we're going to keep that one. That's a, that's a good one to keep. So... That's where we are. That's the initial call. So what we've done is we started with 32, 32 pages. It's a 30-page NOTAM with front cover and rear cover. So it's a total of 32 printed out. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to kick 11 of those out. Okay, so we're down to 21 pages. Okay, so now we've kind of, we've eliminated 11 out of the package. Um, so now we're down to 21 pages. So you think, well, it's still pretty busy. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into different segments of what the NOTAM is and the kind of flying you're going to do. Real important. Okay, so now um, we're going to talk about the pages. I've broken it up into basically five different groups. One is pre-flight planning. Um, number two is en route, and that gets you all the way from wherever you are up to Fisk, which is the entry gate into the Oshkosh um, approach. The next is from Fisk to Oshkosh proper, the airport itself. So that's a, that'll be another data package. So once you pass the Fisk gate, then you can take all that data, you've made it, and you can put that away and get your next package of data and have it ready to go to everything you need to go from Fisk to the airport itself. So to kind of declutter your cockpit. Um, the other one is, uh, the next one will be is if we can't go into Oshkosh. Uh, I've got all the, what I consider the alternate data to go whether into, into Fond du Lac or Appleton. Um, that is another one, so keep that one handy also. And then the fifth package is what I call general info, frequencies, things of that nature. So let's go through the first one itself. Okay, pre-flight planning. The pre-flight planning page number one, page number one, has lots of good info. Fuel. You can get fuel at Oshkosh that's uh, actually reasonably priced. Most importantly, do not run out of fuel going to Oshkosh. That's just stupid. Um, plan on what you're doing. Don't try to come in at the very end of a long day. Try to get there uh, as you uh, with ample fuel, because assume you may have to take an alternate. Um, so don't go bingo fuel on an approach into Fisk. Uh, that's just kind of silly and stupid and unsafe. So don't do that. Make sure you, you have ample fuel. Make sure you do your loading and all of that in appropriately and correctly, um, but don't do anything unsafe or stupid. Most importantly, do not run out of fuel. There's plenty of fuel there. Don't worry about going in full tanks and all that. If you have, have a, again, this is summertime, so have ample fuel. Um, do not run out of fuel. Um, there's air shows going on, so it'll be busy or it'll be slow or it'll be busy all the time. You just never know. So Understand that there's air shows going on, uh, and you can. There's plenty of information when that's going on. There's actually uh, info in here, so uh, don't try to figure out that you're going to come across Fisk as the air show is uh, starting. Now that's the other thing is, right before it's starting and right after the air show ends, it's going to be busy. There's folks that have waited to the last minute, or they're barging in in the first minute right after the air show opens up. So pick your fights. Good time is very early in the morning. I've gone in early in the morning where there's been one or two airplanes between uh, Fisk and the airport. Uh, I've crossed Fisk with one or two airplanes in front of me. Yeah, you got to get up early to do that, but um, that's a way of doing it also. So pick your fights and that kind of stuff. Um, think about alternate airports. So you're going to have that in your hip pocket. That's something you may have to do. You're going to be listening to the ATIS uh, and all that stuff. So you're going to um, you should know how it's going, whether or not you're going to have to go to an alternate. You're going to be monitoring that ATIS. Um, parking signs. This is real important. On page one, they, they tell you all different kinds of parking signs, whether you're going to be home-built camping or parking or vintage aircraft. Or you're going to be in there for uh, at the FBO or whatever. Make your signs up. Make your signs up early. Don't try to make them up on the way or on the approach. Make them big, okay? The, the, the folks that need to see this are the scooter people. Okay, the scooter people live in a faraway land. They're very nice people, but the scooter people live in a faraway land. They only get to come out one week out of the year, and their, their vision isn't too good. So if you try to take a ballpoint pencil or ballpoint pen and make a, make a sign like this as you're rolling out, this isn't going to be good. That's not good at all. So you, what you want is something uh, with a broad stroke, uh, really, really kind of something you can see 20, 30 feet away. Uh, as soon as you get off the runway, you're going to be uh, be uh, you're going to have flag people that are going to get off to the runway. Once you get toward your area or the area that you you want to get to, you're going to have to uh, you're going to want to put this up in your uh, your uh, visor area, whatnot, or your glare shield. So have it where you can see it uh, from quite a distance. Put one on both sides if you have to. You never know. But help the scooter folks out. They're great folks. Um, they're not. Uh, you know, it's not like they've got the uh, eyesight of an eagle. So help them out. They're rolling around on scooters, and the flag people also help you out too. 
That's the other thing is you may not get to where you, you may not go to where you need to go right away. The most important thing is as soon as you land, you need to get off the runway. That's the most important thing is land and get off the runway. To that end, if you cannot get your Cessna 172 or your Piper Cherokee or your Beechcraft Bonanza on the runway and stopped in less than 1,500 feet, you need to work on that now. You don't need to lay down a 3,000 foot landing going into Oshkosh. Work on that now. That's part of your planning today. Start today. Don't, don't just all of a sudden go in and figure you can, you can do this. You, you, again, you're going to be hot probably. You're going to have a bunch of junk, so you're going to have high gross weight. So think about those things. Don't do anything unsafe, but practice. do some practice now and, and get it all lined up so that it's, it's a non-event. Okay? Um, real important. Bring an, extra, um, bring an extra marker. Yeah, bring an extra marker and um, an extra paper with you when you go. You never know, you may want to change something. You may want to change your sign from one parking area to another, depending on what's going on. So uh, bring a marker, bring some extra paper. Um, tie downs, bring tie downs. Most importantly, bring tie downs. And this is all in the pre-flight planning, page one and a couple others. So bring tie downs, do not forget tie downs. Yes, you can rent tie downs, it's a pain. Trust me, I know, it's a pain. So bring your tie downs. Um, and then the other important thing is, um, most importantly, is be safe. And if you can, have someone else, uh, if you have a co-pilot, even if they're not a pilot, have them handing you uh, some of this information and, and brief it and read it. Read it before you get going. So that's most importantly. So that's page one, pre-flight planning. It doesn't start the morning of going to Oshkosh. It starts now. So think about that now, okay? So that's the first, that's the first package. Uh, the next one is VFR planning guide. You're going to look at this and you're going to figure out which way you're coming to the Oshkosh area. On this, you should be able to cross out certain areas. If you're coming in from the north, you probably don't need to have the approach from the south. Things of that nature. So the VFR planning route is going to be part of our, I call it the pre-flight uh, flight planning package. Okay, So that'll be something you want to you put together. Um, the page number three, VFR route planning guide. Uh, same deal, figure out which way you're coming to, to, uh, to that. And then if you have to, you can cross off one of your, uh, whatever you're not using to declutter your mind when you're reading this, okay? So most importantly is that's, a, that's what you need to do. And as far as I'm concerned, that's package number one. Now, what I do typically, what I'll do is I will uh, staple these at the bottom and I will, Keep them full size, but it's a whole lot easier to flip through them this way than to try to flip them over uh, that way in the cockpit. So you can do that. Strike out what you for sure don't need to declutter your mind and visually while you're flying in. So real important. So that's, that's what I call the pre-flight planning package. So that's package one. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so that's package one. One of five. Not 32, not 21. One of five. Okay, let's make it simple. Okay, um, the other thing too is, uh, most importantly, do not bust any VFR or, uh, pardon me, FARs. Talk, if you have to talk to Class C airspace, Class D airspace, do it. Do not just blatantly blow through area because you're going to Oshkosh. There's no call for that. That's just absolutely silly. Okay, so now this is, um, this is the part I call the uh, en route package, uh, paper package, okay? So this is gonna be our VFR, our Fisk VFR arrival. So now we know that we're coming up into Wisconsin. Um, we've got kind of a plan. Before the one gate was, um, was ripping, uh, which hit, feeds you to Fisk. Well now, it's, uh, you've got four actually. You've got Endeavor Bridge, Puckaway Lake, uh, Green Lake, and Ripon as far as your initial fixes going into Fisk, okay? So everyone's gotta go through Ripon for sure, but you may be, uh, again, you're gonna listen to ATIS and ask them what they're gonna be doing. I'm not sure exactly why the transitions are set this way. I believe they're set this way for possible holds um, because they've got good landmarks. But uh, in here and also on your sectional, um, the uh, identifiers are there to put in your nav base, your GPS nav base, our nav, so you can, um, you can identify to those. So that is uh, page number four is the first page of our, um, page four is the first page of our en route package. Page five is, again, more uh, information, and it has to do with the Endeavor 
uh, Puckaway, Green Lake, and uh, the, the transitions, and then the routing to Fisk. Okay, so that, that is going to be part of your get to Fisk package. Um, more information on page six is going to be the Fisk VFR arrival to Oshkosh. What you want to do also is probably highlight your frequencies up at the top of the page. Highlight anything that could be hard to find when you're doing your flight. So that's what I like to do. Uh, highlight that stuff there. So that's the VFR arrival procedures. Most importantly, real quick, don't talk. You listen, okay? Get in line, shut up. No air to air. Don't try to get your buddy four airplanes back or whatever. Be real, be real um, cognizant of it's a uh, Fisk is talking only and you're just listening. So real important, okay? So you're going to be listening to uh, ATIS. On, you can listen to ATIS, monitor, get the latest on that, and then monitor Fisk approach and see what is going on there. And for that, that's really good. You can even do it quite a ways out because you'll get a tempo, get a feel for what the tempo is. Real helpful. And um, so that's that. Page seven is more information as far as what's going on, um, the different transitions, which way you're going to come, whether it's north flow, south flow, west flow, whatever. Um, that information, again, you'll be listening to ATIS and you'll know what's happening. So as a result, you'll know how they're getting everybody through Ripon and into Fisk. So real important for that. Um, Fisk holding, as I said, be familiar with that. Uh, you're going to see that there's a couple, um, there's a couple uh, different holds. There's Green Lake and then there's also Rush Lake. If you go into a hold, that means it's busy. If it's busy, there are going to be a mess of aircraft around Rush Lake. Rush Lake is kind of a uh, marshy lake. It's not a real prominent lake. Um, Green Lake is a uh, deep water lake, so you're going to have those two deals. But if you go into a hold, eyes out of the cockpit. Don't be trusting your ads be because there's going to be a zillion targets out there. But anybody in the airplane, have them eyes outside looking for airplanes. If you see somebody, get in line behind them. Most importantly, this is a big conga line going into Oshkosh. Nothing scary. Just if you're behind somebody, then you're not flying into them or up, or whatever. There are some different altitudes and speeds. Be aware of that for whatever kind of aircraft you have. If you have a fast one or a slow one, that's all in the, uh, all in the NOTAM. But most importantly, get in line, stay in line. Don't try to fly three abreast. Uh, don't try to pass anybody, okay? It's absolutely stupid to put you or anyone else in harm's way because you're in a rush, okay? That's just stupid. So don't do anything unsafe. So that package, this is what I call the uh, en route package, and that's pages, um, that's pages four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'll call that my en route or getting to Fisk package. Again, I like to staple them at the bottom. All right, let me do it this way. I like to staple them at the bottom, and uh, they're again they're single sided, so boom, everything's there. I don't have to flip anything around. So this is my en route package, okay, so package number two, pretty simple, okay. Now, we've made it to Fisk. We went through the gates, um, everything's cool, uh, we, we got in line, we kept our mouth shut, we did our little wing waggle thing, they'll call that out, you'll see that, you, there's even YouTube stuff on that. So now what I call the uh, approach phase or from Fisk to Oshkosh. So what that's going to be entail is pages... Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 14. Uh, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Uh, so 9, 10, 11, 12, and 14. So page 9 is VFR arrival to runway 9. Well, do I need that? Yes. What you're going to do is on this package here, there's only five pages in here. On this package here, depending on what ATIS says, is you can immediately get rid of half of it. Okay, so then we got, we got four runway options. By listening to ATIS, depending on the wind, wind will either be out of the north, or it'll be out of the south, or it'll be calm. If it's calm, that opens up 927, or it's coming out of 45, who knows what. So you're going to be listening to ATIS, and by listening to ATIS, you should be able to actually strike away some of these that you don't need. Okay, if they're, if they're landing on 27, you really don't need to worry about uh, approach to runway 9. Okay, so that you can actually just take your Sharpie and... Strike it off. That's something you don't need to clutter with. And it, again, tell your uh, co-pilot or your, uh, your passenger that's helping you out, uh, strike that out. I don't need that. Read this to me. This is the runway we're going to. So that kind of thing. So page 9 is Fisk arrival to runway 9. Page 10, Fisk arrival to 27. 
Okay, you're going to use one or the other. Page 11, Fisk arrival to 1-8 right. Page 12, Fisk arrival to 3-6 left to right. Okay, so it's going to be one or the other there. And then another one that's real important that I keep in this package because now you're going from Fisk, your eyes out, you're following the railroad track, you're following the road, you're following, you're looking down at the ground, eyes out, and you should be behind somebody. So follow somebody. Uh, and you should see the line of aircraft uh, as you get close to the airport. It'll be even more evident, but you'll see the line of aircraft going in. So be careful there. Um, and then the, the fifth page of this package, page 14, is the airport notes. It talks about the different color dots, things of that nature, uh, whatnot. The most important thing is once you get on the ground, land, do a good landing. Don't worry about it. The, all these people watching, who gives a crap? Land, do a good, safe landing. Get off to the side of the runway. There will be flag men, that, flag people, I guess, that will be meeting you. And all I want you to do is get off the runway, and they're going to aim you somewhere. Go there. Worry about where you're camping later, worry about your parking later, worry about your rent car later. But get off the runway, best place to die on any airport is the runway. So get off the runway. Once you do that, for your first, I'll say, half a mile or mile, you're going to be following flag people and you're just going to get in line into the airport. Once you get there, and you will have your signs out, once you get there, then they'll figure out where you need to park on some of the secondary taxiways. Most importantly is you'll need to get off the runway. Uh, so that, there's that. Um, and the flag people will typically, no problem, they're, they're going to be real good. They're going to run you. If you have to go over grass, it'll be dry grass. You're not going to dig in the mud or something like that. So that's package number three. Package number three is five pages. Of package number three, you're only going to use two of the pages for as far as the runway goes. The other two, wind's going the other way, you won't need them. So really, there's only three pages in package three. Okay, so that's... That's uh, that part of it there. Now, the fifth pack, or pardon me, the fourth package is what I call the alternate. Okay, something happens. Uh, they've got to close the airport. The airport got full. It just happened. Now you're probably it's probably you're probably not going to be the first one in line to have to go to divert. But if you have to divert, um, there's Fond du Lac diversion. So we've got page. So we've got page 13 um, for Fond du Lac diversion. Page 21, it's got arrival and departure, all the frequencies, all the good stuff there. So that's a real good one to keep. Keep it that there. Um, page number 22 is arrival and departure continued. Uh, frequencies, runway lengths, all sorts of good stuff there. VFR, uh, they talk about all different stuff. Camping, showers, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, another alternate is going north instead of going south of Fond du Lac, going north to Appleton. Again, arrival and departure procedures, page 23. Keep that in a group too. And arrival departure, Appleton continued, page 24. So in the fourth package, we've got page 13, 21, 22, 23, and 24. I call this the plan B package. Just in case something happens, we're ready to go. Ready to go to our alternate, ready to make different plans. And it could be the fact that the airport just went IFR. Local, locally, it went IFR. In, at Oshkosh, it's either going to rain, or it's not going to rain, or it's going to be hot, or it's going to be cold, or it's going to be windy, or it's not going to be windy. Who knows? So you're going to know that as you're flying in. So that's something that uh, you're going to want to keep uh, track of. Last package. This is the last package, and this is just kind of hip pocket stuff. Um, page number 30, flight service info. Always good to have, so I keep that kind of close at hand. Okay, and then the other one, which has all uh, just a whole mess of frequencies, which is great, is um, the, the back cover, which is page 32. If you, on the PDF. So that's the back cover. Really good to have. It has all your different frequencies for Oshkosh, uh, Appleton, Fond du Lac, local phone numbers, um, effectivity, the NOTAM and all that. But this is all good stuff. Um, also good to have. And then if you want to listen to frequency, this is actually kind of good keeping your knapsack. If you got a monitor or a radio, you want to, a little monitor, you want to listen to stuff during the air show, you can uh, listen to that stuff. There's some frequencies there you can listen to. So that's the Fifth package. Fifth package only has two pages in it, page 30, and the last one I call that just general info. Um, and you can, what you can do here is you can mark these, you can mark these, uh, let's get the first one. You can mark these, uh, just have a big letter A, something like that. Um, and then you just A, B, C, D, E, uh, one, two, three, four, five, whatever you want to do. And as you do one, you click it off. Most importantly, 
don't wig out. It's not a big thing. It's kind of like going to the shopping mall in Christmas time. It's going to be busy. If you want to go there and not be beat up or get in a traffic jam, eh, go off time. Go real early. I've been over at Ripon, and at 7 o'clock, 7.01, that's when I hear the first airplane going over. So that's the thing, and, and then they slowly get going. But uh, it just depends on what you're, uh, what you're doing and all that. Most importantly, um, do not be tired. Do not run out of fuel. Do not do anything unsafe. It is not a race to get to the airport. Getting to the airport safe is what it's all about. Um, and it's a whole lot better to have a holiday like that than anything else. Um, other things. As I said, it's going to be raining sometime while you're there. So get a little cheapo poncho, put it in your knapsack. Ask me how I know. Trash bag, whatever. It's going to rain on you. Um, just the normal camping stuff. It's Wisconsin. Check the weather as you go. But now what we've done is we've taken 32 pages of information and we have now got <clears throat> uh, we now have five packages that's it five packages that's all you need to know about okay pre-flight uh, planning again it starts today en route you need to know all about that you need to be familiar with that before you turn the engine over the day you're coming in um, from Fisk to the, the approach, from Fisk to uh, Oshkosh, alternates, okay, keep that, and then journal info, okay, so that's, that's all you really need to know. Most importantly, get your cockpit organized. Um, look out the window. Well, you know, I'll just look at ads B because if anyone gets close to me, I'll just look at ads B. There are going to be a zillion targets. Ads B is effectively useless because it is so dense. There are so many targets, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, well, I'll just keep the NOTAM up on my iPad. No, that's a great way to keep your head down in the cockpit and bump into something. Put it out there in your hand. If you have to, make two copies, one for you. Hopefully, you've got a right seater going with you. But keep it on your, keep it on your uh, seat. Keep it ready to go. Keep it all organized. Keep it handy. Keep it big so it's easy to read, okay? It's not like, uh, not like you're old and you can't read. Make it big so it's easy to read. Highlight what you can. Uh, what you need to, put tabs on it, whatever you want to do, such as the runways. You know, you might tab it out for 927. You might tab it out for 1836. However you want to do it, whatever is easiest, you want to have that information immediately. So that's the biggest thing. The more information you have in your head as soon as possible makes the flight to Fisk, to Ripon, to Fisk, enjoyable. You get to actually look at and see stuff from Fisk to the airport, you actually get to see stuff. Is it going to be busy? Yeah, it's going to be busy. But at least you can, you can actually look out and, what, and whatnot. Most importantly, be safe. Practice with the airplane. Don't expect um, somebody to do it for you, okay? There are, and there are going to be knuckleheads out there that have no clue. You can't do anything about that. The only thing you can do is keep from bumping into them. That's it. So they're going to be out there. If your head's outside the cockpit, not in your iPad, you're going to do great. So hopefully this helps you out a bit. This is kind of the way I do it. I break it up into piece parts. So we went from 32 pages to five packages. Some of the packages are just a couple pages. So it really knocks it down. And then once you digest a package or get to a waypoint vis-a-vis -vis Rip and Fisk, you can get rid of that package. Made it, boom, onto the next deal. So it, it gets simpler and simpler. Uh, brief it up with your co-pilot. Tell them what you want them to look at. You can fly with a non-pilot. It's great, but say, hey, you know what? This highlighted thing that's important for me. So if you can, you know, put that put that out there for me. So um, that's it. Um, have a great trip. Be safe um, and do a little planning. And hey, you know what? Here's a great reason to get flying and get a little more proficient in the plane you're going in. So most importantly, have a great time. We'll see you up there. Have a fabulous AirVenture 2021. Hang a rats. Out.